Hey guys, this is Hell Hades, and I'm still the Clan Boss Heavyweight Champion of the World. I won last year, I just won this year, and I'm going to show you exactly how I built the team that I did and why it is so damn good. If you know what I'm talking about, we're talking about the Clan Boss Draft. Uh, this year, it was Epics only. I was up against Deadwood Jedi, Cold Brew, Dub Raids, and YST. And in fairness, they all built some fantastic teams. You should go and watch Deadwood's live stream. It will still be on his YouTube channel. If you want to kind of watch like the full thing and see all the different teams that people built. I'm going to break down how my team won. I'll show you the speed tune. I'll show you all the speeds. I'll also talk you through why I chose different gear sets that I chose. And I'll talk you through the super sub, which absolutely made the difference. Uh, and I'll try and just kind of make sure that when I go through champions and their kits, I'll give you some alternatives in the game that could do the same type of role. So buckle in, let's do this. So let's start with my original draft, okay? I made one sub to this draft and it was after a lot of testing trying to get some decent numbers. So basically I chose Clod as a speed champion. He gives us increased speed. He also brings shield for my teams. He brings increased accuracy and he brings a really important skill for the clan boss, decrease crit rate. Clod is extremely underrated for this fight. Now, when you've got a speed champion like Clod, you need a buff extender to enable you to go on a two-for-one speed tune, which means you're hitting the clan boss twice every time he hits you. It's really important if you're trying to get some high ultra nightmare damage. So a couple of the other decent buff extenders were gone. I ended up choosing Anchorite, who was my buff extender. Now, he also gave me crit rate and crit damage as buffs. He gave me a bit of healing for the team. And he gave me a chance to cleanse the stun target. So Anchorite, albeit he's not probably the most sought after champion in this skill group, he is actually very good. So Anchorite was my second choice. Taradi the Frog was my ally protector. Ally protection is one of the most important skills if you're not doing an unkillable clan boss team. He also gave me decrease attack, which is again a really important skill if you're up against clan boss at higher levels and you're not unkillable. We then picked up Fane for my damage. So Fane's given me poisons, she's given me decrease defense and weaken, and she's a backup decrease attack champion, as well as she just hits hard, okay? And then the final pick for me was Marked. What was going through my head when I first picked Marked was I want increased defense on a three turn cooldown, and I also wanted block debuffs to deal with the stun. I wasn't thinking about Anchorite as my stun um, way of dealing with the stun. I was thinking about how do I get block debuffs into the team. So we did that. We ended up with a speed tune that looked like this. So I got it working from turn six, but it was, it was fine to get to turn six. And basically you see here, we're, we're getting two hits in for every time the clan boss hits us. Um, I ended up subbing out Marked for Morag Bronzelock because she was just a damage dealer, but Marked could definitely go into that spot, as you will see. Yeah, and, and if we time it right, we actually get the block. If we just delay the increased defense, we actually get the increased defense and block debuffs out just before the stun hits, and we're kind of covering ourselves for all of the important skills. So Marked definitely could have fit that team fine. I actually did some testing with Discard, he was probably the best increased defense champion I tested in this team. Uh, if I could have had Grizzled Joel, he would have fit that role really well as well. But it was already taken. I did some testing with Morsi and Mage uh, and a few others. But I just wasn't getting the damage level that I wanted to get. I wanted to one key this clan boss and I couldn't get there. And uh, in the end, I've, I thought back to a collab I did with Ash. And I just want to share this little clip from Ash talking about Morag. Because Morag was not on my radar at all. So I do need to kind of like really <laughs> give praise to Ash on this one. I'm going to go with a brand newbie too. And again, similar to you and Akentim, I'm not sure if she's underrated or overrated or properly rated, but Morag Bronzelock. Um, <laughs> Morag, okay. okay do you know Morag? I do. I, I wouldn't have put her in this group. So I'm yep. interested to see what you got to say. She's got a 3.9 multiplier on this A2. And then she's bringing the big version of Strengthen on all allies on a three turn cooldown, man. Like, That's I don't need massive, to tell yeah. you, but there's only one, I hope I'm right here, but last time I checked, there's only one epic in the game with the big version of strength on a three turn cooldown and you're looking at her. That's the line. There's only one epic in the game with strength and you're looking at her. And it actually got my, my juices flowing because I needed more damage. 
And I knew that Morag for a ally attack, albeit it's not as good as a lot of the ally attackers. You've only got two champions coming with Morag. So I wanted more hits. But I then started to think to myself, if I can bring Strengthen, I actually don't need increased defense. I've got damage mitigation from Strengthen. I can build some more defense into my champions. I can't build damage mitigation. Strengthen is straight up damage mitigation. I can't build that with stats. That's just something you've got or you haven't got. Whereas defense, I can build. So I thought Morag can give me that protection I need as long as I speed tune it properly. And uh, it turned out to be a brilliant, brilliant move. So we ended up going with this full speed tune, which is full auto from the start, by the way, with Clod at 261 speed, Anchorite 231, Taradi 270, Fane 195, and Morag 249. I will put a copy to this down below. But you can see what happens here if you can read this type of chart well. Basically, when we put our buffs up, we get the buffs extended by Anchorite's A2, yeah, so that it covers the AoE hits. And basically, we, what we have here is um, Taradi puts up his ally protection just before the stun goes off. It then gets extended by Anchorite. So we have ally protection up for the AoEs. We have uh, shields up for the AoEs from Taradi as well. We have uh, increase speed. We have strengthen up. Um, so basically, we've got all of this damage mitigation and we've got some damage in buffs as well, like crit rate and crit damage from Anchorite. And it just turns out to be a fantastic speed tune. Um, and, and because we're running on a two for one, we're able to apply the stun onto Bronze Lock, who's going to have strength for the stun. She also has ally protection up at the right time for stun hits. So you see, because uh, Taradi's just thrown it out before the stun. That's massive if you want to last long into the fight, by the way. And yeah, it just all flowed in absolutely perfectly. So this speed tune turned out to be brilliant, like really good. Let's walk through the different sets that I'm running then, because so, this is important as well. If you want to last a long time against Clan Boss, you need to understand the gear that makes it work. And this is the type of puzzle I love. Yeah, the unkillable stuff, I don't love those teams as much because honestly, they're, they're very easy to do. As long as you get the speeds right, they're very easy to do. Whereas this type of stuff is not super easy to do. You have to think about it. So my ally protector in Taradi, he bought, I, I put him in stalwart gear and defiant gear. So the damage he's taking himself, he gets a lot of damage mitigation from. Taradi also self heals so I didn't need to worry about healing for him. I wanted revenge accessories because I've got no counter attack in my team. So that when we take a hit, we've got a chance of going back and hitting again. Taradi's A1 is decreased attack. So the more times I could get him to A1, the better, because I need decreased attack on for the whole fight. So Taradi's build. Uh, was really important here. If you want an alternative to Taradi, it's basically ally protectors on a three-turn cooldown. Champions like Rearguard. Um, Jareg doesn't really do it because he's on a four-turn cooldown. Uh, who else? You get some legendary champions in there like Tyrant, Think for Solf, um, maybe Lugan. Yeah, any of those ally protectors that protect your whole team but are on a three-turn cooldown. They could replace him for Taradi. Now, Taragi, I only needed 180, 170, 180 accuracy because I had increased accuracy from Clod. So remember that in my stats. I've only got 3.3k defense. Strength has given me a lot of damage mitigation. If you've got no strength and you probably need to be on, and you don't have increased defense, you probably need to be on more like four to 4,200 defense. So I was able to reduce my numbers a bit there. But basically, I went the right speed, high health, as close to 70% crit rate as I could, and enough accuracy to do the job. And in terms of masteries on Taragi, I picked up, basically, uh, War Master was the main mastery. And then we had uh, the ability to land decrease attack better and for it to go on for an extra turn, possibly. That's why I went support tree. I really wanted him to keep decrease attack on for as long as possible. Uh, I did have, he's my only one who was wearing a blessing for the run that I did. Three star cruelty for my blessing. So that just enabled me to drop the defense of the clan boss by a bit more. So if you've only got one blessing in your team and it's epics, cruelty is the way to go. If you've got multiple, then you can start to make different decisions. But cruelty is really useful to have. Okay, let's move on to Fane. So Fane was my damage dealer. She didn't have to fit a speed tune in terms of she's not buffing anyone else. So everyone else, I, I wouldn't have been able to run stuff like reflex gear or that type of thing. But 
or refresh accessories. You just can't do it because you'll, you'll run out of your tune. But Fain, I could. So I tried raw damage and it did okay. But when I put reflex on, because I wasn't overflowing the debuff bar, I got back round to her poisons quicker. I kept decreased defense and, and weaken on more effectively. So Fain, we went for ref uh, reflex and then just straight damage. Uh, you can see in terms of stats in a second. 196 speed, again, 70% crit rate, high attack, high crit damage, enough accuracy to land her abilities. And then again, it's kind of like 3.3k defense. It's quite low for a killable team, honestly. But Fane's very squishy. Like a base defense, 727. She's hard to get a lot of defense on. So strength would really help me to keep her alive. Okay, masteries. Most masteries are set up like this with the kind of defensive mastery. Same for Claude here, you see. So Claude, and actually my other two champions I'm going to show you, they were all in Guardian gear. Guardian is a, a small version of ally protection. Plus it brings you healing as well. I don't have a natural healer in this team. Claude does a tiny bit of healing. Anchorite does a tiny bit of healing. Fane does a tiny bit of self-healing. Taradi does a decent amount of self-healing. Yeah, but I didn't have an out-and-out -out healer or a leech champion or anything like that. But Guardian gear... It's a game changer, honestly. For a killable clan boss team, it's one of the most important sets you can farm. So Claude here was in Guardian to protect the rest of my team, protect 10% of the damage they would have taken from clan boss um, for each Guardian set you've got. So again, Claude is an HP-based champion. We went high health. Speed that I needed, this was 259. 70% crit rate and enough accuracy to land decreased crits. Of same sort of defense number again. And you saw the mastery is pretty similar to Fane. Exactly the same as Fane. Uh, if we then go on to uh, Anchorite here. So Anchorite again, Guardian gear. Tried to push a bit of attack into Anchorite's build because his heal is based on his hits. He doesn't hit very hard. He doesn't heal that well from it, but uh, it's better than nothing, I guess. His stats here were 232 speed. Uh, and then I tried to push decent health, decent uh, HP and attack. He doesn't need accuracy in his kits. I went down this tree, the support tree here for masteries because Steadfast Mastery, I could, I could have him as my leader, but the clan boss wouldn't target him for the stun because of this, Steadfast Mastery. If I didn't have Steadfast, he would have been the stun target and I would have been dead a lot earlier. As it was, the clan boss focuses position two, which ends up being more ag on my team and was able to last a long time. So I'll then show you the Morag build. This was my super sub. As I say, like Ash opened my eyes to this champion. Again, masteries were similar to what we had with Fane. We've gone Guardian set again. I did go for a damage build on Morag because she can hit. And we've got here 5.5k defense. She's my stun target. High defense, lower HP for a stun target. It's the way you want to be. Basically, with a stun hit, the more health you've got, the more damage you take. But it does get mitigated through defense. So... You want a slightly lower amount of HP, high defense for your stun target. 248 speed. Again, 70% crit rate was the target. And she doesn't need accuracy as well. She doesn't have any debuffs to land. Okay, let's go into the team setup here. So what we did, Anchorite. This is a full auto from the start. Anchorite, we open with the A3 and then prioritize A2 over A3. This could be any buff extender on a three-turn cooldown. So Godseeker, Sandlashed. Valerie, uh, there's a whole bunch of others. You can go to hellhades.com and check that out. But any buff extender on a three-turn cooldown can do this job. Morag is in there for damage, strengthen, ally attack. But honestly, it could be any damage dealer or any increased defense champion on a three-turn cooldown, increased defense. Yeah, so this is a, a, a spot which is quite flexible. But for my particular team, strengthen enabled me to last a lot longer into the fight. Uh, and again, for her, we just prioritize the A2, then the A3. Claude is a speed champion. He doesn't bring a speed boost. He just brings a speed buff. So if you've got someone who does speed buff and turn meter booster like a high cartoon, the speeds would have to be slightly adjusted. There is speed tunes on deadwoodjedi.com for this type of thing. But ultimately, there's a few in the game. Lydia is one, does the same thing. She actually brings strength in as well. She actually brings decreased defense and weaken as well. Lydia is a really good option for this Claude role. But yeah, anyone who's doing increased speed but not turn meter booster would fit straight into this team. So Frostbringer, Claude, Lydia, 
Uh, they had a few off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a few others as well. He's also doing a shield here on his A2. So I prioritized the speed boost first and then the shield ability second. And his A1 does the decreased crit rate for me. On to Taragi here. So Taragi, I opened with his A1. Again, this is full auto from this, this setup. And then we prioritize the A3. But for Taragi, for Clan Boss, you just turn off the A2. It's a pointless ability for Clan Boss. So you don't want to use it at all. And then Fane. Again, this could be subbed with any damage dealer. Anax. Um, there's a whole ton of them. Any damage dealer. Draco. Venus. Like anyone who's going to bring you debuffs, ideally, decrease defense and weaken. Or between Morag's role and Fane's role, you want decreased defense and weaken. You want a poison. You want high hitting damage. So Fane's very good here. Uh, and I just prioritized a decreased defense and weaken first and then a poison ability. Okay, so I'm going to let you watch it through. Uh, I will say like, you know, there's definitely subs that can be made for most of these positions. I've talked about that already. It doesn't mean though that you will definitely do the level of damage I'm doing. Also bear in mind like my gearing is very strong here. I've used really good top quality gear. But this team definitely could do a two key with less quality gear. Okay, just, just if you understand the mindset of where you need to be with the gearing. Uh, yeah, the Guardian sets make a massive difference. The Ally Protector makes a massive difference. Um, also, if you've just got like a different buff extender, like let's say you've got Godseeker instead of Anchorite, that can work and it will work really well. But Anchorite is cleansing my Morag here. If Morag is not being cleansed, then our strength of buff goes out of sync. Therefore, we start taking more damage in uh, periods where we don't want to. So you would actually, if you were using this team without Anchorite, you would have to make Fane the stun target, for example. Yeah, so you do have to consider if you make changes, what's the impact of the change? Another good example, if you don't have Taragi, and let's say you used Rearguard Sergeant in that role, you can do it, by the way, it's absolutely fine. But you don't get the shields that Taragi's given you. And Rearguard Sergeant, um, she doesn't self-heal. She does have healing, but she doesn't self-heal. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of like you lose something, you gain something else. So when, whenever you're making subs in teams like this, it's just you need to consider what was that person bringing to the table and am I replacing it with something else? Anyway, I'm going to play the run through, enjoy it. I'll come back in at the end just with some final thoughts.
so there you go. We lasted 78 turns against Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss without any legendary champions. Honestly, I love this team. I love doing it. I really love this type of event. Uh, so again, thanks to Deadwood Jedi for putting this on for us. I love this type of event. I love the theory craft inside of it. And yeah, to survive that many turns, I actually can't believe I've done it myself. When we were talking about this before we started, I thought people would be hitting around 40 million. I really did. And to come close to 90 million surviving 78 turns, I can't even believe it was possible myself. Big shout out to Ash for the Morag sub. That made a big difference to me. Anyone who I had in this position was doing about 10 million damage before Morag came in. And also because she's bringing us ally attacks, everyone else was doing a bit less damage as well. So massive, massive props to Morag here. She made a big difference to my team. Obviously, if you've got someone like Farak in here for the ally attack in this position, that would be cool as well, by the way. Uh, but you would lose strength. And so you'd have to adjust, 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 adjust. But you change someone, you don't adjust something else. Uh, but yeah, we ended up doing 7 million from Anchorite, but did a lot of healing for us in the end. Morag, 26.5 mil over that run. Very, very cool. Claude, 8.2 million, but he did quite a bit of shielding and healing as well. Also gave us that decreased crit rate, which meant that we weren't taking big crits at the end. That's why other runs failed, by the way. That's why YST failed, took a big crit. Taradi, 15.6 million. So some of that is poison, some of it is hits. Also a lot of self-healing and good shields for the team. Fane, 31.5 million. Um, people were saying she's too squishy. She can't survive in this style of team. She can if she's got her friends around her supporting her to do it. And, you know, the amount of damage mitigation from Strengthen, Ally Protection, Guardian Sets, Shields is absolutely colossal. So there you go, guys. Up in Hell Hades, still the Clan Boss Heavyweight Champion of the World. I'll see you later.